Well, welcome to a very different remembrance service for most of us this year. We thought we'd have to do something and so we're doing this online service. So we hope this is something you can connect with and find great encouragement in. We're going to use many of the same things from remembrance and we're going to have pictures and videos from our local war memorials. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. There will be some words on the screen and some opportunities to respond with other words. The words in bold are yours to say. So as we go through the service, you can join in with some of these if you like. We will be having a act of remembrance, which if you time it right, will be around about 11 o'clock. I can't uh, guarantee that with the way YouTube works, but somewhere around 11 o'clock, we will be pausing for uh, a time of silence. And let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil, divisions and hatred. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. So we say together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we have some prayers. O Prince of Peace, bring your peace into our disordered world. Come now to live in our hearts. Bring your order into our chaos. Hasten the day when you will come again and all people will acknowledge your sovereign rule. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 38. An eye for an eye. You have heard that it was said, Eye for an eye, and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of the Lord. That Bible reading said, turn the other cheek. Okay, but how? Does it still apply? Does it always apply? Some Christians would say that it does, and I respect that point of view. But the problem is, if a Christian chooses not to defend themselves, then it's still another thing to not defend someone else, someone who's in need, someone who's unable of defending themselves. If I see someone being attacked, then I really ought to do my best to defend them. Otherwise, well, how would that be loving my neighbour, the greatest commandment? So if I'm prepared to defend someone at an individual level, well, how does that apply to a village, a city, 
a country. Well, this is a famous uh, argument of Augustine of Hippo, the just war theory, not just as in only, but justifiable war. The Catholic Catechism built on this says, all citizens and all governments are obliged to work for the avoidance of war. Though it might be a last resort if everything's failed. Even then, wars shouldn't produce evils and disorders graver than the evil to be eliminated. It's very complicated to work out the rights and wrongs in these situations. Within a war, there are justifiably awful things, but war doesn't make all things justifiable. In fact, we have the Geneva Conventions as an attempt to draw the line, what is and isn't acceptable in a war, then how do you enforce it? The killing of civilians is generally thought to be wrong, but of course, that often goes on in wars. In the Second World War, the Luftwaffe targeted our cities. In fact, invented a word to coventrate, to describe the terrible destruction they visited upon Coventry. Wholesale destruction there. A thousand planes dropped a thousand tons of bombs and there were a thousand casualties. But then, of course, we weren't innocent either. The bombing of Dresden by the RAF was several times worse by any measure. I do wonder that, was it really justified? Or was that just retaliation? You know, if they've done that to us, should we do it back to them? Well, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Thank God I wasn't there. But I do know what it says in the Bible. And it says, well, in the Old Testament, it says an eye for an eye. But that's not the final word on it. Jesus taught us to be better than that. He said, not just to love one another, but to love our enemies and pray for them. That is so difficult. Never gonna be an easy thing to do at all. In a time of war, I just can't imagine how you can do that. And yet some people have. It is true though, if you want to completely destroy an enemy, you can make them your friend. Jesus says to us, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. No pressure then. We're not going to be perfect in such an imperfect world, but we are called to try our best, to be the best people we can be, to love our enemies when they don't deserve it. Loving even when there's no logical reason to. Refusing to retaliate, no matter how much someone deserves it. But also by loving others and saving them from harm wherever or however we see it. Whether that's an individual or the country of Poland. That's ultimately what we remember today, the sacrifice of those who protected us, our previous generations, our father, our grandfather, our great aunt or mother, from harm in conflicts gone by and sadly still present. Where evil pressed us into action and war was the least bad option. We remember those who gave their lives for us long ago. And that always comes back to Jesus who loved us so much that he gave his life for us so that we may be free, rose again to show us the way. It gives us a hope that there is a better world without all this war. Perhaps where we can say thank you in person to those who have gone before us, to those who have given everything for us. Well, remembrance this year has been different. But I do pray that it's also been a special one for most of the same reasons. Not being able to gather together has been difficult, but we've done our best, I think, with limited resources to make this a time once more when we remember the fallen, those who have given their lives for us, and Jesus himself, the perfect example of sacrifice of giving his life so that we can be free. Our act of remembrance today is going to be virtual in the sense that you're watching a, a video, although it will also be coming from St Philip's Church, from St John's Church, Wetley Rocks and the monument up at Warrington. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died 
in the service of humankind. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. They fought the good fight. Royal of Honour, Wellington, Hume and Washerwall, 1914-1918. W. George Bettany, Ernest Bettany, Harold Bennett, Joseph Ball, William Kaplan, James Capewell, Frank W. Donovan, John Green, Walter Hume, Reginald George James, Harold Lindon, Joseph Morris, Arthur Morris, Albert Ernest Middleton, Arthur Shenton, George Wilshire, Frederick Wister, Henry Appleby, Moses Bowian, William Bowyer, James Capewell, Edward James Chadwick, Frederick A. Cotterill, Eric B. Creek, Thomas Devereux, Ralph Gibson, Ralph Goldstraw, Edward Meir, Joseph Morris, Arthur Morris, Herbert Phillips, Ernest E. Pickford, Enoch Turner, Norman E. Weatherby, and those who gave their lives in the Second World War, 1939 to 1945. Joseph Merrick, George R. Jackson, George Devereux, James W. Turner, they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow, we gave our today.
Now we're going to have some prayers which will have um, a line of response if you'd like to join in with that. Living Lord, in the dark hour you spoke of the gift of peace. We seek that gift for ourselves. Grant us, we pray, the inner serenity which you alone can give, that we may become messengers of peace to a strife-torn world. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Give peace in our hearts, O Lord. We pray for all who suffer as a result of the wickedness and folly of others. We especially pray for those who suffer from the breakdown of law and order, or from the absence of just and humane laws, and are thus denied the freedom to realise their birthright as your children on this earth. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Give peace in our hearts, O Lord. We pray for those whose nerves and bodies are strained beyond endurance, the streams of compassion drying up within them, their only goal the destruction of the enemy, whatever the colour of their skin, we pray for them. Whatever the sound of their tongue, we pray for them. Whatever the insignia they were, we pray for them. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Give peace in our hearts, O Lord. We pray for all those who have been broken in battle, for those who weep, for those who can no longer weep, for those who feel the anguish, and for those who have lost the capacity to feel, for all prisoners and for all jailers, for those who exist in war-torn lands and for those who no longer have a homeland. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Give peace in our hearts, O Lord. We pray for all those who stir up strife, for all who make a profit out of the misery of others, for all who are led into vice as they seek a momentary forgetfulness, for all who believe that war is inevitable. We bring to you our particular needs. As we all face another lockdown, Lord, we come before you asking for your hope to see us through. And Lord, we pray that you may hold us fast amidst all the evils of this world, that at the last we may enter into the peace and joy of your kingdom. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Give peace in our hearts, O Lord. And we close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and the welfare of the nations. And so we say together, Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen.
If you haven't watched one of these videos before, we do have uh, an online service every week from the benefits of St John the Baptist Wetley Rocks and St Philip Warrington. You're always uh, more than welcome to tune in at 11 o'clock on a Sunday and share with us what God has to say to us this week. So may God bless you and hopefully see you again. Almighty God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen and the Commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.